Have you ever eaten breakfast to slap some cereal? If you ever did this between 1994 and 2006, you might remember getting a video game copy in the cereal box, which usually varied heavily in quality. Some of these games that you got were straight ripoffs of family board games that you'd find around the house, while others ended up becoming cult classics. So what better way to honor the hours that game developers put into these pieces of art that you could find in boxes when you went to have some Cocoa Pops in the morning by making a tier list? So that's more overdone than these games, but is somehow more in date. All right, now the easy part, I just get to look at a tier list. So on this tier list that we've got, we've got S, A, B, and C. No one really cares about D because C is middle of the row, so everything below C is just bad. So you've either got fail or that the game was too boring, so I didn't play it. So if your favorite game ends up there, just remember, your game sucks. I feel like we should just start off with some of the easy board games just to knock them out of the list. So what have we got here? We've got Scrabble. <laughs> Playing with grandma. Okay, let's put Scrabble on boring game didn't play it because who plays Scrabble? We've got the game of life. I'm sure that many families around America played that game. It just seemed boring. Clue. Now, Clue the game, board game, fun game, love playing Clue. Clue the video game where I'm guessing you were playing by yourself sounds bad. I mean, it sounds okay, but it sounds like it gets boring very quickly. I feel like half the fun of Clue is trying to work out if the other person is lying to you. Kind of like Among Us. Look, I'm going to be generous. I'm going to put Clue at C because it's a fun board game and I bet it's okay to play. Let's now get through some of these just other games that aren't maybe known too well. Like Lego Creator. I don't know what that game is. I don't remember seeing it there, but I'd assume that you're a Lego person, you created. Boring game, didn't play it. Stuart Little 2. Now there's two camps when it comes to Stuart Little. One, you're on the Facebook memes and you think Stuart Little should be squished and stepped on because he's such a baby character. Or, you're in the cinema file, that's for... Oh, you're a film enjoyer and you think that Michael J. Fox gave a brilliant performance as Stuart Little and that Hugh Laurie actually peaked in this movie rather than the acclaimed TV series series house that I got halfway through. So because of that, Stuart Little, a tier. Like Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, except you're a rat. Speaking of Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, you could get in cereal boxes. How cooked is that? A game that is so synonymous with like one, people getting their music taste in punk and rock and everything like that. And two, people in that like 2000s generation loving video games. A lot of it comes from just this one game and you used to get it for free in a box of cornflakes. How crazy is that? But look, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I thought at seven years old, boring game. You can only do jump so many times before you get, you know? So in saying that, I'm gonna give it a B because I played it again later on and I didn't mind it. Flight Simulator 2000. Now I don't know if it's specifically the 2000 one, but Flight Simulator did get packaged in with the cereal box games, and uh, in honor of the tragedy that Kellogg's may have brought upon the world, let's put that in an F tier. Now I'm gonna hit another controversial one because everywhere I look, this game is the best game on there. On every single list, it's always number one. Chex Quest. I actually don't even know what brand that's supposed to be from. I'm gonna check that real quick. For some reason, I have a map up of the electorate for the United States in 2012. It's a non-violent first-person shooter game created in 1996. It's a Czech cereal. Oh, the cereal's just called Chex. That, that check, that checks out. That checks out. <laughs> well, you can get it on Steam. We might try it. We might go into bonus section of playing Chex Quest. We're gonna come back to Chex Quest. Let's take a look at Crazy Taxi. All I can think of when I think of Crazy Taxi is Simpsons Road Rage, because I assumed that that was just a straight rip of Crazy Taxi, but better because yellow people because of the Simpson characters, because they're the Simpsons. Better because they're the crazy taxi filled with white Caucasian males and females and probably nothing else because it was the early 2000s. It seems fine. This is all based on road rage. I, it seems fine. It seems like an all right game. I'm going to put it at a B. The same level as Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 because it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know another fine game? Age of Empires. You used to get that in a cereal box. That is only good because we used to play it in high school during our study periods. That is the only reason I have any like positive associations with Age of Empires 2. As a kid, wah, too boring. It's all right, but like you want to play with your friends. It was a good way to fill some time. I'll put that in a base here as well. Roller Coaster Tycoon. In the process of making this tier list, I think I realized that I have played this before. I used to think that I'd never played the Roller Coaster Tycoon games, but now seeing it in this group of the cereal box games, I 
think I did actually play it as a kid. And I think I played a lot of it. I think it was really fun from memory. You know, who doesn't want to run their own Disneyland? Who doesn't want to run their own movie world? or Luna Park. That's all we have in Australia and they're both nowhere near as big as just Star Wars Land. And all you want to do as a kid is make a bigger park than Movie World and Roller Coaster Tycoon lets you do that. So just for that, we're going up to an A for this one. Now, uh, there's a lot of two games happening here, so we might do a sequel rapid fire on this one. So let's start at Toy Story 2. I very vaguely remember playing this on my grandparents' computer when I was like six or seven. So it must have been absolutely Pog. You know when you take those toys to go to your grandparents' house when you're a kid because you know you need to fill a few hours? That's what Toy Story 2 was for me. Who doesn't want to fly around and shoot lasers? Come on, it's Buzz Lightyear. Come on. I just remember it being fun, but is it as fun as Clue? I think it's more fun than Clue. Continuing on in our sequel run, Shrek 2. If this is the game I'm thinking of, this was a great game. There was like a maze and there's hedges and there's a whole heap of doors that you have to run through. So much fun. So many hours. Probably when I was a kid like 10 hours and that's a lot when you're a kid and solely for the functionality of not being able to use your keyboard and having to type Shrek 2 goes to A. Great time. But I am telling you, a better sequel than Shrek 2 is Lego Island 2 The Bricks' Revenge. Oh my god. That thing is amazing, and I actually want to do a video on it on this channel. It was just open world skating. That's basically what it was, but you're a Lego dude, and there was a pizza place. Great song. Great soundtrack, great game. And just for that song alone, for the fact that you kind of get to go to other islands, but everyone forget- You go back in time. Oh my God, you go back in time. I forgot about that. Baller game. I'm remembering so much of it. Definitely going to be a video on the channel at some point. S tier game. And now that we're done with the sequels, it's time for us to play Chex Quest. I'm gonna run out of ammo. I didn't realize that that would be a problem. Okay, I don't have any ammo though. Like... Where? Oh, okay, um... Oh, okay. F tier. Bad game. Who plays that? Who plays that stupid baby game? Bad game. Bad game. Imagine, imagine not giving somebody enough ammo. I know that I'm judging the HD remake and not the original, but hey, the remake had to come from somewhere, didn't it? And I bet it came from the original. I bet it came from that stupid- You know what's a better cereal-based game? The Cocoa Puffs game. The Sunny's Race for Chocolatey Taste Cocoa Pops, or as the Americans call it, Cocoa Puffs. That game is already better than Chex Mix, so default it's going to C for the better C-named one. I never played it, but it doesn't deserve to be lower than Chex Mix. All right, now we get into the juicy ones. By juicy ones, I mean Robots the game. It wasn't called the Robots game. It was called Rodney Copperbottom and the Robo City Heroes. I think it said robot, but that's the amount of respect it deserves. I remember the Robots game being good, but I think I had it on PS2 or the Wii. But I remember that game being good. And solely based on the memory of that, that's all I'm thinking of when I put it into this tier list of games here. And you know what? It's better than the Coco Pops one because I didn't play it, but it's on the same level of Toy Story 2, which is, I think it's a good game, but I don't actually remember playing it. And now Halo 1, the very first Halo game you could get in a cereal box. I can't imagine little Timmy opening his, what's what's an American, what, Fruit Loops? And being like, Dad, I'm gonna go get Halo. And then 10 minutes later, he's running around with an infinity sword. I never played the game. I really hope I got that reference right. The energy sword. Fuck! You know, like, Halo, you know, it's fun. Have you ever played Halo recently, though? <laughs> Halo does not hold up. I was more of a PlayStation guy, so Halo's gonna hit that boring game didn't play it category. But lastly, rumors on the street. In the UK, you used to be able to get The Simpsons Hit and Run in a cereal box. What a steal. Considering that that game now is worth $80 minimum anywhere you look for it, that is insane that you used to just be able to get that shit for free. This is the least contentious one because like who played The Simpsons Hit and Run and didn't come away saying that this was the best game that was ever made? <laughs> one of the best games, you know, Fall Guys exists. But The Simpsons Hit and Run is just amazing. It is such a good game. It's an incredible game. So many like legitimately, like no meme, legitimately 50 hours into it. Like before I was, I don't know, 13 when I stopped playing it, maybe 10. Baller game, solid game, no question, no doubt, 
is a default S, and I also want to do a video on that too. Let's give a rundown of the list that we've got at the end of it. So in the S tier, also known as I will eventually play this game on the channel tier, we've got Lego Island 2 and The Simpsons Hit and Run, two of my favorite games from my childhood. I love those. In the A tier, we have the improvement on Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, which is Stuart Little 2. We've also got Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 and Shrek 2. This tier is also known as a sequel tier. In B tier, we've got... Oh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, I guess. Crazy Taxi, because it can't be as good as The Simpsons Road Rage, but that is a pretty good concept. Age of Empires, Toy Story 2, and Robots. All games that firmly deserve to be in that tier of, I remember this being good, but I don't remember a single frame of playing that game. In C tier, we've got Clue and the Coco Pops game, which I've actually, I didn't even mention it. I have zero idea what that game is. I have no idea, but I was just that mad at Chex Quest that I decided it was better. Speaking of, we got the F tier. We have Flight Simulator 2000 and also Chex Quest. And lastly, we probably have the most debated tier in the comments, but guess what? I don't care. Scrabble, Game of Life, Lego Creator, and Halo 1. <laughs> I just realized how ridiculous it is having Halo 1 at the very bottom, but guess what? I don't care. It's my list. Anyway, that pretty much wraps up this video. I thought it was really interesting that they used to do cereal box stuff and I completely forgot about it and I feel like a lot of people did so maybe you didn't even know about it and if you didn't know about it that means you have to subscribe because I taught you something and that's valuable in this world a day without learning is a day wasted and you just learn you'll never waste a day watching one of my videos <laughs> subscribe bye